Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future Technologies, poised to transform our lives for better or worse, are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used, or just around the corner, from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Juliette Lamar, and joining us today is Alex Kinsman. She is the regional head at NEM North America. Welcome, Alex. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. We're very excited to hear more about NEM and what you're doing over there. So for our listeners who might not be uh, experienced with NEM, can you give us a little overview about the company? Oh, sure. Well, I work for the NEM Foundation, and we are, uh, our whole purpose is to introduce and educate and promote the use of the NEM blockchain technology on an international scale to all different kinds of industries and institutions. And we're one of the most well funded and successful blockchain technology projects in the cryptocurrency space. And if you've never heard about NEM, I would encourage you to check it out. So NEM really is the easiest and safest way to put business data on a blockchain. So we are a plug and play platform and NEM's blockchain technology really delivers a platform for management of any kind of asset, whether it's currency or supply chain, notarization, ownership records and more. So um, it's it's really simple to use, and the big differentiator is rather than force you to write your own smart contract codes from scratch or to use off blockchain methods of defining custom assets for your for your business, NEM just gives you a direct API access to specialized set of tested and secure on blockchain features, and so. Those are just plugins. So we're just a plug-in blockchain. Very, very cool. It, it, it sounds like it's got solutions to a lot of different problems. Are there any use case examples that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, we have a ton. I mean, it ranges from security trading to supply chain, remittance, government, identity verification, notarization. Um, Internet of Things works beautifully with NEM, and we have hundreds of use cases that have actually deployed on NEM. So it's not white papers, but actually use cases that have deployed on them. So really any kind of business where you're looking for DLT technology definitely should be looking at them. And, you know, NEM is, is, is not the only one out there doing, doing these sorts of things. What are some of the biggest mm-hmm. advantages to NEM? Oh, uh, that's a great, great question. So big businesses and startups alike can use NEM to create cryptocurrency tokens, but also to manage all kinds of data. So by putting business data on blockchain, it provides a permanent time stamped record of every action in a database. So this can actually provide huge cost savings because there's no need for an extra security layers. Um, or remote data backups it just allows for automatic accounting. And it's estimated that blockchain technology can actually reduce expenses by 80% for financial processing and storage. So that's why you're seeing so many companies look at blockchain right now. Wow, that's that's quite a, a, a increase in storage. You know, that's that's amazing. Um, you have so many different little things that that users can can access. Talk a little bit about your NEM smart asset asset system. Yeah, so a smart asset is really just a self-contained, pre-tested, built-in smart contract, and it works with any kind of apps, and it's able to do that thanks to APIs. And on NEM, we have something called a mosaic, and a mosaic, that's, that's just really just a digital asset in NEM, and mosaics can represent cryptocurrencies or stocks or tickets and coupons and IOUs, all kinds of assets. So um, that that's what a smart asset is. And right now, this past year on our permission chain, because NEM has both a private chain and a public chain, but um, on our private chain, we just released our latest update and it's been in the works for over two years. It was released uh, earlier this year on our private chain and it's called Catapult and it's a full featured blockchain engine that can power both private and public with all these built-in features that I was uh, talking about. 
And what's cool is these features, they enable bulletproof digital asset creation. We can do decentralized swaps. We have advanced account systems, business logic modeling. And so as it rolls out to our public team, it's going to become the core NEM engine. But if you can imagine anything that you may need blockchain for, um, so we actually just released Catapult, which is our big update that's happened over the past couple of years uh, in building. And Catapult is a full-featured blockchain engine, and it can power both private and public networks with all these built-in features that I was talking about. And these features, they enable... Bulletproof digital asset creation, we can do decentralized swaps, advanced account uh, systems, and also business logic modeling. So many different different avenues and and ways that you can help people who are just starting at the, starting up with their businesses. And it's incredible. Yeah, we have teams actually all over the world. And that's that's what I love about NEM is it truly is global. And uh, we started out, the NEM Foundation started out in Singapore, but now we're all over the world. And so uh, I recently came on to, I've been with NEM actually for a couple of years now, but my background was as a game designer and I spent 20 years in the gaming world with um, majority of my career was really focused on digital tradable assets in games like Pokemon Online, Magic the Gathering Online, I work for League of Legends, write games on League of Legends on their product launches as well as Xbox. And so there was just so many parallels between what you're seeing in online gaming and online entertainment. There was a perfect jump for me to move over into uh, cryptocurrency. That is so cool. And, and, and speaking of the cryptocurrencies, NEM also offers a wallet option. Yeah, we have our Nano wallet. So the easiest way to actually get started with uh, with NEM is to download the Nano Wallet from NEM.io, and it has um, a universal client that has Trezor support. So anybody in a cryptocurrency space, make sure that you're using a wallet, a hardware wallet. Um, that way, you're keeping all your crypto safe. But our client uh, supports Trezor, and we have a desktop client for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and we have mobile wallets for iOS and Android. There's really no reason for you not to do it. There's a ton of different ways that you can you can access the wallet. And very simple and very very easy for people to navigate, which is so important in this space where things can get confusing. Things can can appear to be more complicated than they are. Mhm. Mhm. Actually, when I started out, like I mentioned, I was from gaming, and I would take a lot of the royalties I got from my games and put them into you know, different ways, uh, gold and silver and stock market. And I looked at cryptocurrencies. And in the beginning, how I got into this space was I looked at high market cap, low coin price, and I found NEM. And I thought, wow, this, you know, their their cryptocurrency is called ZEM. It's X-E-M. And I thought, okay, this is interesting. I'll try this out because I had tried out Bitcoin like everyone who first, <laughs> who first gets into cryptocurrency. And then, you know, I went to Ethereum. And then I began to look more on the different blockchain platforms, and I was super impressed, super impressed by them. And I jumped into their community. It was so friendly, and there was a lot of tutorials and um, easy, easy information on how to get started. And so I just fell in love with the technology, and I began making videos for them just for fun um, to help market the brand because I thought, wow, this is I want to actually support this community. This is pretty cool. And so I've moved actually from a community member to heading up the North America region, which is pretty funny. But, you know, I think it's great <laughs> for people to, you know, check out the technology. For our family, I have a 15-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 3-year-old, and we pay our kids in cryptocurrency. Um, my son actually is an investor, and at the age of 12 last year, um, he began to take a lot of his cryptocurrencies. Uh, he had iTunes gift cards that he gave to me, and he turned – turned it over to me and said, okay, mom, I want to buy cryptocurrencies instead of using you know, these iTunes gift cards. And I was like, all right. So he down, downloads Blockfolio. And that kid made $10,000 over the course of a few months at the end of last year and would check Blockfolio every morning before going to middle school and learned all about how to use a hard wallet. But I think it's important that people recognize the power that anyone, anyone really can can learn about blockchain and cryptocurrencies. And for my kid, who was 12 at the time, 
you know, he pulled out the money that he put in and he spent, you know, that money that he pulled out. He ended up purchasing coding classes, coding camps, and he built a computer. Um, he did a bunch of things to continue to further his education. And it really showed me that information is accessible. And if a kid can do it, then take a look at, you know, and anyone who's listening to your show, they can do it too. It takes a little bit of lo- uh, work. You have to look around and, and watch videos and look at sites and, you know, do your research. But but it actually pays off when you find the right kind of platform. And for me, it was men. Men just had the best and most seamless blockchain platform that I had seen. And again, you know, I go back to other blockchains are in the white paper stage and we're not. We have real use cases, real companies that are building on them from Japan has used them to power its, uh, you know, its, its power plants. That's pretty crazy. And uh, we work with all different kinds of companies. So they're deploying. And now you're getting into the stage, which is pretty exciting for me, where you're not talking about blockchain in theory. You're actually focused on more, you know, more stories where, where people are using it for, you know, actual, their actual company. So that's pretty exciting to me. And it's so great to see it working in the real world. And that's what's really going to, to get the wave truly going for mass adoption because right now people are are trying to ignore it some people are trying to ignore it because they don't see they don't see a real world case they don't see the 12 year old who is paying for his computer camp with the crypto that he's mm-hmm. made you know they don't see that and until they do it's it's hard for people to get it's hard for this to get the respect it needs yeah i would say that's true in america um right now in asia they're so ahead of the game and mm-hmm. they are crypto friendly and, you know, I look at Loyal Coin is actually one of my favorite projects right now that has just um, really done well. They've pushed crypto into the reward segment and they're like this stealth loyalty program that's just taken over. And I love that they, they're doing blockchain based customer loyalty points that can be used with different merchants and it's shared by peers and it's converted to other cryptocurrencies. So, you know, they're working with big names like 7-Eleven and Cold Stone Creamery and Grab. Uh, this is a service out of the Philippines. It's just like, um, you know, Lyft. And so I look at this kind of stuff and I'm like, man, this is, people just don't realize. Like, it's already starting to convert and and, and people, they just don't realize. And even uh, this past week on them, um, one of our partners, HE3 Labs, just announced that they're working with the Crow Tribe Indians on an e-governance project that they will be showing at Crow Fair in a few weeks. And I think that people need to start paying attention to groups that would normally get overlooked that now have a chance and are using blockchain as a a new technology where they can uh, do things that haven't been done before and, and help, you know, rise, rise up. So the Crow Fair it will definitely be something for everyone to keep their eye on um, when ET3, you know, unveils what they're doing with their Crow Tribe and, and the NIM blockchain technology. Well, that is wonderful. And and all these things just, like you said, it's really a global movement and it connects us in so many ways. And I just love yeah, that. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I, yeah, so do I. And you know, I became obsessed, you know, part of it is the game, <laughs> being a game designer, you know, I look at I look at systems and I look at the way that people connect, and that's what really drives me is connecting with other people. And um, I was I go to the UN every couple of months and and you know work in their their study groups. And um, recently, last month, I was there with Dennis Kucinich, who's the former U.S. representative, and this was at the Blockchain for Impact Global Summit. And he said one of my favorite quotes ever about blockchain technology. He said that it decentralization presents the distribution of social, economic, and political power. And he says that it's a critical moment right now where everyone is called to take a stand to this new world, that we are changing our social and our economic reality. And I love that. I love the fact that we live in an age where we are changing our social and our economic reality. And I love being a part of that. And the community that I'm in, they love being a part of that. And it's a movement. And I, I, again, I can't emphasize enough that people need to start paying attention because companies are using it. 
and they're thriving. And it's just, it's a fantastic technology. I love, I love how the terms that you just put it in, that, that is a very empowering statement. Yeah. I, I mean, it's exciting actually when you sit at the UN and you're surrounded by these amazing people and they're working through problem solving the supply chain management or um, human trafficking, right? Or voting, voting protocol, everything that's happening right now in the world where information and identity are just not working with, with the way that uh, the way that things are in the world today. And so we are changing it and there's solutions out there that are being tested and put into place. And so to me, it's pretty exciting to see it's not, it's not just Japan that's innovating, but now it's a lot of other countries too. And so I wanted to be a part of that movement. And it's why that I'm spearheading what's going on in the United States, paying attention to like uh, regulations and, and paying attention to what the SEC is saying and looking at how, how we can be using this technology in better ways and scaling. Absolutely. And what a fantastic and exciting time to be in this space. I think, yeah, I think it is. I mean, I get up every day and the first thing I do is check Twitter and it's not for, (laughs) it's not for politics, believe it or not. It's actually to see what has changed in the world for regulations. What, you know, what, what new companies have announced how they're using blockchain, how much money have they raised and what are they doing with it? Who are the teams behind it? Right. When I first got into blockchain and cryptocurrencies, I was trying to figure out, okay, who, you know, cause again, you know, going back to game design and game designers create worlds in these economies and um, they, you know, a really good game designer is coveted because they, they are the ones that are creating these worlds. Well, the same thing with developers and blockchain and cryptocurrency. So I knew in the very beginning, because of my background to follow, which, which developers should I be looking at? Uh, when did they start their projects? Did they start it in 2014, 2015? Are they brand new? If they're brand new, most likely they haven't had their product tested. You know, um, I want to support blockchains that have been tested and are bulletproof and show, you know, can show me that they can do what they, they say. And so a lot of it has been research and following platforms and, and just jumping into communities. And Telegram is great for that. Telegram was just essential and YouTube for me to, to go and learn more about, more about blockchain and cryptocurrency. So you, you kind of told us how you would get started with NEM, you know, go in there, get, get started with the wallet you know, what are the best ways to connect with them, to follow this journey, and to get started? Oh, that's, thank you for asking. There's so many, so many different ways that you can connect with them. But I personally, um, I recommend people to jump into our Telegram group. It's called NEM Red. And that's just like a whole bunch of people that are super excited about NEM and they talk about it all the time. If you're a developer, though, because I'm, I'm not going to forget the developers, you're going to want to go into Telegram and take a look at the uh, NEM projects. And these are all of the really innovative folks that are building on NEM and they all get together and they you know, they ask questions. We also have a Slack channel, nem2.slack.com, where you can ask questions. But for everyone else, check out nem.io. All of our social links are there from Twitter to Facebook to Telegram to Slack. Um, so there's just a ton of different ways that you can, um, however you like to learn, most likely we have a channel that's going to support the way that you like to learn. <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, Alex, thank you so much for joining us here today on Future Tech Podcast and sharing your passion and your insight. Thanks. It's so great to have uh, this channel to actually talk to people and share all the reasons why I love blockchain technology. And I, I appreciate being on the show. Well, thank you so much, Alex. That is Alex Tinsman. She is the regional head for NEM North America. You can find them at NEM.io, so N-E-M.io. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been Juliette Lamar with Future Tech Podcast. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner of Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post to review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.